Hey everyone, how's it going? So I'm back with another vlog. Uh, this one is of a different topic. Uh, for those of you who don't know or haven't noticed or haven't heard, um, Classic Game Room is actually leaving YouTube uh, as a result of all these content ID claims that have been going around of basically companies stealing other people's profits for for their work and uh, more or less claiming it as as their own. Um, and so what happened was pretty much following this, um, Classic Game Room has decided to leave YouTube and completely just run their whole show on their website. And I saw Dean Thompson's video and he's really good friends with, uh, Mark Bustler who runs the whole thing. And, uh, you know, in his video he was sort of, uh, you know, giving his appreciation and his thoughts and his, telling us about his history with, um, classic game room and you know how, how it inspired him and I kind of felt uh, motivated to do a video of my own so I'll leave a link in the description to watch his video um, he is more or less friends with Mark so it's a much more personal thing than him uh, for me I've helped him out for a couple things um, I would not say he and I definitely you know are, are friends sort of but I do know him and uh, I, I, I would think he vaguely remembers me. It, it's, you know, I, I've helped him out with a couple of things. But anyway, way back before I had Industrial Gamer, the YouTube channel, I had my original channel, uh, channel Game Boy 61494, which is my PSN and Xbox Live gamer tag. And uh, that channel I had way back in, I want to say mid-2007, early 2007. Um, that has been, that channel has been closed for quite some time. Um, the reason was, um, was due to the fact that, you know, it was, uh, it was, at that time I was in middle school and I was like one of those victims of bullying and, you know, people just, it, it just, all the hate and all the, all the, uh, discouragement just got to me and I decided to shut down that channel. It, it didn't get, I had like barely a hundred subscribers at the time, maybe a little over a hundred. Um, but you know, I, I sort of just gave in, I, I collapsed, my, I more or less, my, my knees collapsed and I just gave in to do all the discouragement and such. But I remember I was subscribed to Classic Game Room, uh, way, way back then. Now, Classic Game Room has provided, was more or less the inspiration for me, um, for my original way I wanted to do YouTube. Originally, I just wanted to do reviews. This channel was originally thought to just be a review channel, my previous channels as well. I would just do reviews. And, you know, one of the main driving forces behind that concept um, was Classic Game Room and, and the way he did his reviews and how, how great they were and how, and how they're multiple parts, they're edited very well, you know, he, he, he was a great speaker. And, you know, that was one of the main driving forces behind my motivation to make reviews on YouTube. And later that kind of shifted uh, to where I did multiplayer gameplay, then I got into unboxings, then I actually started doing playthroughs at one time, and then after that, I figured it was too much work, went back to doing just what I do now, first impressions, sort of gameplay here and there, and also multiplayer gameplay. Um, but, yeah... You know, Classic Game Room is such uh, it, 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 that channel. You know, it, it's part of it's part of this whole gaming community on YouTube. Yeah, I, I would go as far to say that you know his reviews are one of the best, if not the best, um, you can find on YouTube. You know, it's not of course it's Classic Game Room. You have all these reviews of classic games, but there's also you know modern games. There's games that come out now for next gen, for 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 current gen, but also going way back to you know consoles like the Vectrex and and the uh, the Sega Saturn and the, the Panasonic 3PDO and, and all you know all these different platforms. And and you know it's funny because as someone who you know I grew up in the 90s, my first console was the N64. I also had original PlayStation. You know all that was lost to me, and I didn't have you know I I grew up with those consoles, but you know, I was young and I wasn't able to experience the main portion of those of those platforms. You know, I did play a lot of games back then, fighting games, but you know, also some more casual games. But you know, I never I never played the original GoldenEye for N64. I was like what, like five, four years old, you know? 
I, I didn't I didn't know what James Bond was and you know my I didn't have games with lots of shooting and, and, and action and you know stuff like that. So that whole that whole kind of era was lost to me. You know, I'm thankful that I was able to grow up during a cartridge generation for to say, but I didn't really have um uh the uh luxury of being able to experience those consoles at their fullest potential with all the games like I can now. You know, it's this generation, this past generation with the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 was really my first generation where I delved into it hardcore. The previous generation, I was solely a PS2 um, uh, owner only. I did not own an original Xbox. I did not own a GameCube. I only owned the PlayStation 2, which, you know, was the winning console more or less um, this during the sixth generation. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, but this this past generation was where I basically, you know, del delved into it hardcore, and I tried to play everything, and I think I did a pretty damn good job of playing everything uh, that you know I wanted to play this generation. There was a couple games that kind of slipped by me, and they were bad games, so I don't really feel like I remember saying Turning Point: Fall of Liberty. If you guys remember that game, and I was like, wow, that game looks really cool. You know, and I was like 13, 12 at the time. I was like, wow, this game looks really awesome. And I wanted that game, and that game turned out to be absolute crap. At least that's what people say. I mean, I didn't play it, but yeah. You know, Classic Game Room, it's an important... It, classic Game Room is so important to this community. And to see, you know, this, this whole issue with YouTube and the content ID claims affect people... I mean, affects something like Classic Game Room that much to a degree where they're going to leave completely from this site. I mean that's a huge, that's a huge, huge, huge loss. And, you know, and, and all this, I guess all the reviews are going to be posted mainly on their website, um, you know, classicgaming.com, which apparently uh, Mark wrote on Twitter, they're doing really well, actually, with the signups and and people coming over there. They said that their servers are actually overloading, which is, you know, I mean, that that's a great sign when you have that amount of traffic coming to your site of people who just love your reviews and just love your content and want you know want to watch it regardless of where it is where where it's placed you know that's just an awesome sign and uh, it, it, it's just it's just really it, it's unfortunate that you know on YouTube it, you know where everything is sort of like in one place you know that it's it's unfortunate that that all the reviews won't be posted there you know but I'm sure. I'm sure what it's going to come down to is more or less he's probably going to be bringing update videos or some notice videos or, you know, I follow him on Twitter, so he'll definitely be posting there what reviews he's doing and when they're posted on the site. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I played um, with Mark. I actually helped him in his Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 review, all right? And I, I was, uh, me, and, and me and a couple people got in with him. Uh, for a multiplayer match of Modern Warfare 3, which Modern Warfare 3 had an awful multiplayer. But, you know, we all we all went in there, and I thought, wow, this is an awesome opportunity for me. I'm going to join in. And luckily, I was fast enough where I was able to join in and play, uh, you know, Modern Warfare 3 with him and a couple of his fans. And, you know, you can still watch that review, and you'll see my old gamer tag. Um, it's xxcameron 614 It was like a gamer tag that I first created, and then I changed it to Game Boy. But um, you know, some of the footage I was I was in that review, and to see you know be able to talk with him and to play some games, it was it was just an awesome, awesome feeling. You know, I, I've been subscribed to him, like I said, back in '07, um, and just hearing his story about how he created a classic game room, how you know it was, uh, uh, I guess, a TV show in the late '90s that didn't last that long, and to see it. How he brought it to the internet back when you know YouTube. I mean, YouTube wasn't even bought by Google back then when he started doing this, and and to see how it just took off and it's now you know became to where it is where it is now where he has a large amount of subscribers, a large fan a fan base, and a lot of people love the reviews and he reviews practically everything. I mean, it's not it's not like he's biased or something. He reviews everything from from many different eras, and no one else brings that type of variety. There's no one else you can go on YouTube to watch a current review of, um, I don't know, like some some old game, like like Spy Hunter or something, like an old review of Spy Hunter, um, and, and and to see you know 
and, and, and see that. You can't find reviews like that anymore. He's like the only one who does it. And it's just, it's, I mean, it's, it's just, it's a really difficult situation, you know, because I feel, I just feel awful um, as a fan of his that, that, you know, this, this whole YouTube thing has, has, it's changed so fast and so quickly. I mean, comments were gone like, like that. And now all of a sudden these content ID claims are coming up. It's like, what the hell is going on? And to see it get to a point where it's completely driven away a business from its, from, you know, the web, uh, from YouTube. I mean, that's just, uh, it's a large business too. It's not like it's small or something. It's a large, large company. And to see it just go away like that, it's just like, you know, wow, what the hell happened? And it was so quick, you know, it was so quick. Comments, the whole YouTube, Google Plus comments thing feel like it happened just yesterday. I mean, it's like, what the hell happens? I'm just so surprised. But at the same time, you know, I'm happy for him. I'm happy that he's not going to sit here and, you know, have to sit here and deal with the content ID claims with people claiming, all well, these companies claiming uh, his reviews as their own content and getting money off of that. And definitely, you know, regardless of where he decides to post his reviews, whether it's just exclusively on the website or maybe he goes to some other other um, video sharing site, regardless, I'll follow him there. And I think a lot of other people will. You know, he's the most, again, you can't find reviews like that anywhere. No one does reviews like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've talked with him on a couple times on Twitter. It's just short comments here and there. But it, it, that his channel was such a huge inspiration to me. And I just wanted to sort of tell you guys my history about it and, uh, you know, share share my thoughts and feelings about the whole situation with him. And, uh, you know, hopefully, I, I want to get your guys' thoughts. I, everyone who subscribed to me should be subscribed to him to begin with. I mean, he, it's, a, it's a large channel, great reviews. So, I mean, we'll see. All right, guys. So let me know what you think. You can write a comments. Tell me your personal story with CGR, like why, why you subscribe to him, what were your favorite reviews, and, you know, just let me know. All right, his reviews were so unique because unlike every reviewer where they just give a number rating at the end, he just talks and tells you, you know, what you need to know. And it, it's, you know, I, I think that it's different because when you listen to someone, you know, like like IGN or GameSpot, you listen to those those companies, everyone just wants to hear the number because the number only matters. It doesn't matter what the reviewers say. It doesn't matter, you know, what the content that they show. All that matters is that number at the very end, the final verdict. And Mark never reviewed games and gave them a number at the end. He just told you, you know, if the game was fun or not and what he enjoyed about it and why he thought it was good or why he thought it was bad. And that was different because you have to watch his reviews with the mindset of, okay, I have to listen to what he's saying rather than just pay attention at the end to see a number, you know? So in that respect, he's unlike anyone else on this website. So that's it, guys. I'm going to go. Um, thank you all for, for watching, and like I said, comment, let me know your, your personal story if you have one, or uh, I guess you can express your um, feelings about this particular situation, and hopefully, you know, hopefully this is more, I don't want to see, I don't want to see more companies leave YouTube, but I hope that an, in, like an impact would soon be felt by them to the point where they're going to be reversing this whole situation or, or at least it's going to be calmed down uh, to the point where, you know, we'll have people like Classic Game Room or whoever come back in the future to YouTube. So, but we'll see. We'll see. It's, it's a really interesting and um, uh, who knows what the situation, who knows what the outcome of the situation is going to be. We just have no idea. So, I'll see you guys later. Have a great day and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.